Thank you for turning to page 121. Today we're going to take a look at the ship's locker. It's something uh, that's called out in High Guard. Uh, it basically it's just where the equipment aboard a ship would be stored and, and equipment that your ship would have before your travelers invest any money in equipment. Uh, I'm going to give some examples of, of where I started out my ship's locker for my uh, latest traveler campaign. And the information for today is going to be taken out of my old friend here, the 2022 Core Rulebook Update. So glad I bought this. I've gotten to know it really, really well in the last few months and uh, totally worth every penny. So today, ship's locker, uh, equipment your travelers would start out with before they have to actually pay for stuff, There's stuff that would come with the ship. Uh, just also a quick reminder that I'm doing a subscription drive right now for my channel, trying to grow the channel. As in making this video, I'm a little over 800 videos or 800 subscribers, sorry, I'm a little over 200 videos, uh, and I'm trying to grow the channel to get to that mystical 1000 on YouTube, also want to, uh, I have a Patreon, I'm trying to grow it there too, so I can afford to pick up a little bit better equipment, a little bit better lighting, maybe a backdrop for Traveler, that sort of thing, so if you can help out in either regard, I'd appreciate it, over half my views still come from folks that have not subscribed. So if you're one of them, come on, it's, it's fun in here. It's Traveler, it's D&D, it's all kinds of stuff. But today on page 121, Ship's Locker in Traveler. The Ship's Locker. The contents of the Ship's Locker for today are simply going to come out of the core rulebook. It's not going to come out of any of the equipment catalogs or any other of the Journal of Traveler's Aid Societies or any other sources of older Traveler, simply because I want to keep this very clean and just in one book. So the first thing we do is we flip to the core collection. This is the core equipment that you travelers have access to through the core rulebook. As I've said before, I absolutely love that if I wanted to, I could run my entire traveler campaign out of the contents of this one book. The other thing I love about this book, it's not unique to this book, of course, but it's something that they've used and I enjoy, is the different color uh, on the sidebar page here. So you can find this stuff easily. As you're going through the book, you see the different colors and that takes you to different sections. Just very handy to have. So going to the core collection, uh, we're going to take a look at what would be in a ship's locker. A ship's locker is defined as where your travelers would keep uh, most of their uh, stuff that they're not using at the moment. So vac suits, any kind of body armor while they're aboard ship, possibly weapons, and other any other miscellaneous equipment. I'm going to touch a little bit on armor. I'm not really going to touch a ton on weapons in this. It's going to be more about actual equipment. And I'm going to give some examples of some equipment I gave to the travelers who are have a scout seeker ship in my campaign. And I want to clarify one thing. I believe I did say that the seeker was a, a jump one in my earlier videos. And in fact, it was. Uh, I played in a great game back in the early 80s where the GM made the, the seeker ship we're in a jump one. And it just it added to our problems and complexities and things. But in conversations with my players over the course of playing the campaign, and before it's even mattered to the campaign, they asked, how come it's not a jump two? And I thought, well, you know, no real good reason other than my nostalgia. So I've changed it around a little bit. It didn't cost them anything. It didn't change anything in my campaign because they hadn't even used it as a jump two yet. I, it's going to be a jump two from this point forward in my campaign. I mention it because I think that's a good example of how you can rethink something mid-campaign and change it before it has any real bearing on the campaign. <clears throat> so, any references to my Jump One Seeker? That was just a fine memory of Days of Gone, uh, and now it's a Jump Two in my campaign, and it'll be that for that point forward. So now we go to what I gave them aboard the, the Seeker. They got this ship from the Scout Service, and they're they're using it with the idea that you know they could be called back into service on it. But other than that. Maintenance is on them, but everything else, all the use is free and clear. It's a way for the scout service to keep the uh, ready reserve ready. So now we take a look at the armor. I didn't give them any armor except I did give them four Tech Level 12 Vac suits. And you say, well, that's armor. Well, yeah, it's armor. But I'm not thinking of it as armor. I'm thinking of it as life support. It's a Vac suit. Uh, the, the Seeker can usually have a, a complement of four. So I thought, yeah, okay, I'll give them four Tech Level 12 suits, no bells and whistles beyond that, but they will have the four, but I, what I said was, okay, the four are there, but the three are in really good working condition, have been maintained, but they've been cobbling parts from the fourth. 
So they only have three functioning VAC suits. If they want to get a fourth one going, they have to go ahead and put some money into it. So I thought that was an interesting way that the scout service might have VAC suits aboard the ship, because they would, just as a matter of safety. But I thought it would be interesting to uh, make them put a little bit of coin into it. So that's the only armor that they got as part of their ship's locker. And now going past the armor. Ah, it'd be great to give them battle dress, right? I'm going to touch on that in a minute, too. There are no augments, of course. Those are pers personal things. Communications. I gave them all com dots to start the campaign as basically the common thing. And they can have mobile comms if they want to pay for them. I have no issue with that. They can browse through this however much they want. I gave them, of course, their Tech Level 12 computer aboard their, their ship. And that was really about it as far as communications out of here. They haven't really gotten to a need of more than the com dots, so they haven't really looked into it. That may bite them down the line. I've hinted that they should look into some better com equipment, but they haven't taken my hint yet. Computers and software, I haven't done a ton with it. It's just the base one that came with the uh, ship. Again, they can improve it. Medical and care supplies. I have a number of med kits aboard. Uh, just to, I actually have, I think, four that I gave them as part of the ship, stationed around the ship. One by each uh, airlock, one in the cargo bay, and one up closer toward the uh, bridge and the uh, crew quarters. And the idea behind that was this way they would at least have some common medical stuff handy. Uh, you know, you work in a warehouse, which I did for many years. Uh, you get a headache or you've crunched a finger and you, you got to take a little Tylenol. It's good to have that box right there where you can do it. So that was my thinking there. Nothing special about the, the drugs otherwise. But coming down to sensors, I did give them a couple of things because it was a scout ship. I gave them some stuff that people would have just left over the years and crews used or didn't use or however they did. So a few of the things I gave them, I gave them a nice set of uh, tech level 12 binoculars and I gave them a tech level 14 densitometer just cause I thought hey that'd be kind of neat that's just a little non such somebody left in there but I, I gave it some quirks in that it tends to cut out a little bit here and there it tends to not be a real reliable piece of equipment so they have to actually work it a little bit uh, coax it along if you will and then get it to to perform as it should I'm having it that it can perform as it should, and if they want to upgrade it, they certainly can uh, be re buy repair parts for it or whatever they want to do. But again, we're not that deep into the campaign yet that they've really started looking around at their ship and saying, oh my gosh, we need this, we need that. I did give them two pair of infrared goggles also, just because I thought that would be something uh, that the scout service would have available. And then I toyed with a neural activity scanner, and I thought, no, that's tech level 15, this is a tech level 12 ship. This is something I'm going to make them add to their, their ship's locker at a future date. I'm going to take a look at a few more things. Uh, survival gear. Uh, one thing that may not be in here, but I gave as part of the TL-12 vac suits was magnetic boots. Why magnetic boots? They've got grav plates. I know that. But there may be times they're in zero G for whatever reason. And it made sense to me that the scout service especially would have magnetic boots available for use with their tech level 12 vac suits. So those aren't called out here in the this book, but they it's something I gave them. I gave them four respirators, tech level 12, uh, just because, again, scout suit. I gave them some environmental suits. I gave them four of those, uh, four filter masks. I almost gave them a grav belt, and I thought, no, let them pay for flying. So I didn't give them any grav belt, and I did give them one habitat uh, it was a little tent uh, that I gave them. The I think it's the Tech Level 8 HAB module. Uh, and I gave them that just... To, oh, no, it was the tent. I'm sorry. Tech Level 7 tent uh, that they had. Just, again, it was a scout ship. Uh, some mission before it had been used. It fell off the, the ship's registry as a, off the equipment list. So it's just kind of been riding around in there and maybe used, maybe not. So they're still in the process... Uh, of the game. They've only actually done one jump in the campaign I'm running so far. And in that campaign, they were busy with other things. So they haven't really spent a lot of time looking at their ship and figuring out what they need to do and what they need to add. That's going to be coming later. So here we go to uh, various... Uh, I gave them a toolkit, like a basic toolkit for electronics. Uh, I gave them a Tech Level 12 engineering kit also. I feel that that's something that would come with a ship. You can't go too crazy with this. Uh, let's see. I looked at. The, I'm going to look at some of these science toolkits 
but I haven't given any of those out yet. Then we come down to melee weapons and slug throwers. I did not give them any weapons with the vessel. My thinking there would be a weapon is pretty personal choice. A scout ship, by definition, is in a combat vessel. It would not necessarily just have weapons on board, so I didn't give them any. Uh, certainly no energy weapons, no grenades. Uh, they did pick up a couple of grenades in the last campaign or last adventure. Certainly no heavy weapons and no options, no explosives. And the vehicles I did give them, I gave them an air raft with the. Uh, let me see if I can find the air raft. I gave them the air raft with. The ship, uh, tech level eight, and uh, it's just a basic air raft. It'll seat four. Uh, just, I thought it was, or no, actually, that'll seat five, sorry. Uh, just an interesting idea that they would have an air raft. I've always loved the air raft in Traveler. Uh, you, you see that a lot of my GMing goes back to what I've loved about Traveler, but that's kind of the whole point of playing this, right? So now coming back to things I've given them versus things I won't give them. I'm not going to give them personal armor. That's up to them, other than the vac suits, as I've already discussed. And I sure don't want to be running around in combat in a vac suit, because once that thing gets damaged, you could have problems either that day or down the line. Again, it would be funny to give them battle dress, but nah. And then augments, certainly, I'm not going to give. Communications. If they want, you know, high level, uh, tech level 14 computer and things like that, they can spend money on it. They can go to, they're on a planet now that has a tech level 14. They're certainly able to go ahead and, and buy pretty much anything they want. In fact, I expect a lot of the next campaign, the next uh, leg of the campaign that I run, to surround them equipping the ship a little bit better and uh, getting some more uh, equipment. So I'm certainly not going to give them top of the line anything along with a free ship. Now, there's nothing wrong with you doing that. If you want to do, uh, well, I, the, the best example I can think of is something like that is uh, the Expanse, where they end up very early in the, the campaign, very early in the story, they end up uh, stealing a Martian gunship, uh, which has a lot of weaponry and a lot of equipment on board, and it's pretty good that they have it, but that would be an awfully powerful thing to set your characters up with, and that, would, in my mind, would definitely be that type of campaign. The Expanse campaign, if you will, is more of a troubleshooter type campaign. They're not really trading anything. They're just out there fighting the bad guys and, and keeping the universe safe from proto molecule and things like that. I know the campaign has evolved beyond that, but I'm just talking about the early go when they're flying around a Russinanti and uh, what that would uh, be be similar to. So now, as far as drugs go, there are all kinds of you know, combat drugs, fast drugs, slow drugs, panaceas. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can be buying. Again, I'm going to make them pay for that stuff because they decide what they need. I would definitely have some anti-rads aboard. I do have some anti-rad doses in the uh, the medikit, uh, but it's only a very low-level medikit. I would upgrade that medikit medikit quickly if I were them. Sensors. This would be where I'd be spending a lot of my time, and these are sensors not on the ship, but stuff they carry around. I'm thinking a Geiger counter is a real good idea. I'd get the best one I could. The Neural Activity Sensor, the NAS, I would absolutely grab one of those. You can kind of scope the area and see if there's anybody thinking any bad thoughts or any thoughts near you. Uh, electromagnetic Probe would be incredibly useful. Uh, I would also look into some drones, which are not really called out much in this book, but certainly something to look at. I would have some drones. I would also be looking at grav belts, all kinds of stuff like that, that would help me as an adventurer go from this adventure through the next one. So these are things I would not put in a basic ship's locker as opposed to things they can add to the ship's locker later. And the ship's locker can either be a physical locker where they put stuff or, again, going to the Expanse where they've got this big bay right by the airlock that is where most... The, the morgue, as uh, it would be called the military campaign, where most of the armor and weapons are kept and a lot of the equipment. So... Getting over to survival gear and supplies, there's a lot of good stuff that they could be adding. Rescue bubble comes to mind. Portable fusion generator. Yeah, light duty fusion generator. That's always a good idea. So there's a lot of stuff they can add. But these are not magic items as you do in D&D. &D. You're not giving these out as magic items. At least I don't. 
I will make them available to them, of course. They go to the store that has this stuff, the magic shop, if you will, which, by the way, I don't have magic shops in my campaign, but they, in, in any campaign. Uh, but the magic shop, in this case, would be the Dick Sporting's Goods of the future, whatever you're going to call it. They're going to go ahead and they're going to trick out the ship and themselves however they want. And once they browse through the books for a little bit, they can start finding a lot of stuff that they want to add. And that's a good place for all their credits to go, beyond maintaining the ship and everything else. I want other places for their credits to go where they can kind of enhance themselves beyond buying the meanest gun they can have and the, the meanest suit of armor that they can possibly afford. I want them to, to trick it out with other stuff. So that's really all I've got to say on the ship's locker. I think it's a wonderful idea. It's absolutely one I've embraced wholeheartedly. I guess I've always done a ship lock, ship's locker in one way or another uh, when I've given out a ship to be used in the game. I've told them what equipment was aboard. I just never thought of it in a comprehensive form of a ship's locker. So that was something pretty exciting to, to get. So the ship's locker, uh, an important part of your early traveler campaign and, and something you have to be pretty careful about. You don't want to give them everything too soon. Uh, otherwise they'll be spoiled. They won't appreciate what they've gotten. So that's it for today from page 121. I hope you liked what you heard and saw. Uh, this little take on the ship's locker from Mongoose Traveler. If you did, please like and subscribe. Again, I'm on a subscription campaign, so if you can help me out there, that'd be fantastic. I have the Patreon going. If you can help grow the channel, that would be wonderful also. Um, but that's all I've got to say today, so thank you for watching. Thanks for your time, and I'll see you next time on page 121.